What if you take a light switch out of a box and you look in and there's only one cable? Aren't there supposed to be two? Where's the missing cable? It's Dave from Upgrade Your Home DIY and the situation is more common than you think. It's actually called switch loop wiring. So let me go through what's going on and what you can and can't do when you open up a light switch box and you find only one cable coming into that box. So let me start with a mock-up of what we typically expect to see when we are wiring a light switch. Now this is the setup for the wiring of a typical light switch that we find in our homes. So there are two wires coming into the box that has the switch. One is the live circuit wire that's at the top in this particular illustration and then the bottom wire takes the power out to the actual light when the switch is on. So in this box, when we take a look in this box, we see the ground wires are connected to the box because it's metal and ground wire also goes to the switch. The neutral wires are uh, either put together with a WAGO connector as I'm showing here, or you can twist them together and put a wire nut on them, but that gives the continuity of the neutral. And then one of the black wires is connected to one of the terminals and the other black wire to the other terminal. So when the switch is turned on, the power from the live circuit goes through that black wire, goes through the switch and is now connected to this wire that brings it over to the light. So in the, uh, usually it's an octagonal box for most lights. We have the ground, of course, grounded to the box. And then we have our black and white. Some lights will have a ground connector, which you have, have to connect to that ground wire. I'm just using a simple illustration here of a lamp holder so that uh, we can keep this simple, and then the bulb. So this is the typical setup for a light switch where we have the wire coming into the box with the switch. The wire then comes out of that box and goes to the light. Here's an illustration. If you wanna pause the video and study it, feel free to do that. And in this setup with the power on, I simply turn the switch on and our bulb lights up. Turn the switch off and the bulb goes out. So what's going on with switch loop wiring where we have only one cable coming into the box for the light switch and both the black and white wires are both connected to the switch. Now let me show you what's going on using a mock-up of this switch loop wiring. When you only have one wire that comes into the box with a light switch, here's what's actually happening. So let's go back to the uh, what would be the ceiling box. And what's happening is, is that the live circuit is coming into the ceiling box. So that's where the power comes into this whole setup. And we go in, of course, the grounds are connected there. And so what ha is happening is the black wire from the live circuit is connected to the black wire that's going to that switch box. And the white wire from the live circuit is connected to the white wire of the lamp holder, which is substituting here for a light. Where's the black wire from the lamp holder going? Well, it's going, as you can see, to the white wire that's coming from the wire that goes to the switch box. So here's what's happening. The power from the live circuit on that black wire goes to the switch box through the black wire that comes out of this ceiling box and goes to the switch box. Then it comes back to this ceiling box from that white wire. So when we go over to the switch here, we can see that the black wire is bringing the power into the switch box and going to the switch. And then the white wire is taking it back when the switch is on. It takes it back into our ceiling box and then that white wire takes it to the black wire of our lamp holder. So this is why there's only one wire going into that switch box because it's bringing the, the power from the live circuit and returning that power back to the ceiling box and then to the light the neutral goes directly from the live circuit to the light, or in this case, the lamp holder. Here's an illustration of this setup. Again, you can pause the video if you want to study it. 
So in this setup, we now have the power on and I can turn the switch on and our bulb goes on. I turn the switch off and the bulb goes off. Now you might wonder, why would anybody wire it this way? Well, it was actually very common and it's been done for many years. In a lot of older homes, you'll find this because the way they wired it back then is they would run all the circuits to the ceiling boxes. And then when they would just use switch loop wiring down to the switches. And sometimes people did it because, well, frankly, it's easier. You just run wire, one wire instead of two and it's cheaper. Now you might be wondering, is this okay? Is this allowed? Yes, it is. The code used to allow for this particular switch loop wiring where you have the black wire and the white wire both being connected to the switch. Now they changed the code a, a number of years ago, so they now require a three wire cable to do switch loop wiring. And I'm gonna illustrate that for you in a little bit. Now, the code hasn't necessarily been adopted in every single area, so check your local area to see what the codes are there. And it's generally for new wiring instead of existing wiring that's in the wall. So you don't have to pull all the wires out of the wall or anything like that. If you have this existing setup where the black and white wires are going to the switch and that's you just wanna replace the switch, go ahead, it's fine to do that. When does having just two wires, the black and white coming into the box become a problem? becomes a problem any time that you want to add a device that requires a neutral wire. So for example, if you wanted to add a smart switch, those require neutral wires. So you wouldn't be able to add the smart switch in this box because you don't have a neutral wire. Also, if you wanted to add an outlet, either in this box or run a cable to a location close by and add an outlet there using the power from this box, well, you can't do that because an outlet requires a neut neutral wire. So you might be wondering, can I fix this? Is it easy to fix? Well, you can fix it, but it's probably not easy and it's probably going to involve quite a mess. See, what you have to do is you have to run another cable from that light switch box to that ceiling light box. That's probably not gonna be easy. It's probably gonna require you to cut into the wall, the ceiling, because that wire generally has to go up the wall through some top plates of that wall into the ceiling, maybe even through some ceiling joists, that's not going to be easy and it's going to require a lot of repair. Now, if you already have a project going on where you're, you know, taking down that uh, wall board or opening up the wall and ceiling anyways, well, just make it part of that project. Sometimes though, you, you can get lucky and either you've got an unfinished area behind that wall or you have access through maybe a closet that a hole's not gonna be really noticeable. In that case, you might be able to fish that wire, but it's not gonna be easy. Now, if you do cut a hole into a wall or a ceiling in a closet, in a area that you're not gonna see, you could use a spring panel. Now, spring panel uh, allows you to patch a hole, cover it up without having to do all the drywall work. You could even use these spring panels if the hole is in a visible part of the room, but it's going to be hidden behind furniture or a TV or something like that. Now, these spring panels come in two different sizes. Uh, I'll put a link down below in the description for a couple of the different sizes that are common. Now, if you do string that second wire between the light switch box and the ceiling box for the light, then you can go ahead and rewire it the way you expect a, a normal light switch wiring to be. That's the first example I showed you earlier. You don't have to rewire anything if you have a three wire cable coming into the box as we have here. So we'll notice that the ground is grounding the box and it's going to the switch. There are three colored wires. The black wire brings the power in from the ceiling light box. The red wire returns the power back to the ceiling box once the switch is on, and the white wire is the neutral wire. So in this case, our switch box does have a neutral wire. So you could add a smart switch, you could add an outlet, something that needs a neutral wire. This particular wire does have all three, the black bringing the power in, the red returning the power, and the white for neutral. This is the current way to wire a switch loop. 
I'll put a link to the pigtail lamp holder and WAGO connectors I used in these mock-ups in the description. Before you do any work on a switch, the wires in a box or an outlet, make sure the power is turned off at the breaker and you confirm there's no power coming to the wires in that box. I did a video on a $7 tester that will help you to determine is an outlet or a switch live and make sure that the wires do not have power to them when you turn the breaker off. I'll put a link to that video up in the corner. So if you remove a switch from a box and discover, wow, there's only one cable coming into that box, now you know what's going on and you know what you can and can't do with the wires coming into that box. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button so that other homeowners, DIYers like you and I, can discover this on YouTube and understand what's going on when they run into this situation. Subscribe to the channel so you get notified of new videos that I publish. Thanks again for watching.